All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming to today's speaker event, Life Beyond Borders, put on by Alliance for Korea United and Liberty in North Korea at UCLA. Uh, my name is Nam Shikyu, and I will be your moderator for tonight's event. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I am very excited, uh, especially since we have a special guest here with us who will be sharing his unique and inspiring story. Um, to give a quick rundown of today's event, uh, we will first have some opening remarks from our co-organizers, then the main speech given by our guest speaker, Mr. Oh Chung Sung, followed by a Q&A session where the audience can directly ask questions to the speaker. And lastly, we will close with the Link UCLA raffle ticket giveaway and a group photo. So just a few things for everyone in the audience to know. Uh, you will be muted throughout the event. This is to ensure everything runs smoothly uh, with no technical difficulties. However, the chat box will be open the whole time. So you can utilize that function if you have any questions for our speaker during the event. Uh, to briefly explain how this event was organized, I was actually active in Liberty North Korea throughout my grad undergrad years at UCLA. Uh, and after graduating two years ago, I've been working as the Youth Engagement Coordinator for Alliance for Korea United. And so this is actually the second speaker event that we are hosting together with Link UCLA. And it's truly been a pleasure to continue working with them even after graduating. Uh, so now I would like to welcome up the Link UCLA co-president to give a few remarks on the work they've been doing this school year. So let's all welcome up Allison. Hello, everybody. First of all, can anyone, everybody hear me just fine? Feel thumbs up. Awesome. All right. Hi. Um, good morning. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our collaboration uh, speaker event. My name is Allison Mobble, as Nan mentioned. I am one of the co-presidents for Liberty North Korea, LINK for short. I will be using LINK uh, throughout our speaker event this uh, <laughs> this uh, this time, so just kind of get that out of the way, at UCLA for the 2021 and 2022 term. And what is LINK, you may ask? LINK at UCLA is an organization comprised of dedicated students committed to securing human rights and freedom for North Korean defectors and raising awareness about the humanitarian crisis occurring in North Korea. We do this by hosting events from screenings to benefit concerts, as well as raising funds that go directly to rescue missions that help North Korean refugees escape and find resettlement in countries like South Korea and the US. Our mission as an organization is to raise awareness about the human rights violations in North Korea, as I mentioned before, and to be the forerunners for change by instilling urgency and empowerment in individuals to bring North Korean refugees to freedom, safety, and increased opportunities. We achieve these goals through three main pillars, raising awareness, with this initiative, our goal is to promote social awareness and responsibility within our own local community and those at large. We hope to educate and spread information that will enable others to take initiative in our human humanitarian efforts. And our second pillar is fundraising. Every year, our chapter strives to raise funds in efforts of helping at least one North Korean refugee find liberty. And our third uh, pillar, Linking Minds, which is actually a new program that we have incorporated in our um, in our team this uh, this year. Um, and so our new program where a UCLA student is paired with a North Korean refugee um, to help them with their English skills. And it is a way to provide an environment for North Korean students, as well as our link members to foster long lasting relationships. And uh, right here. As of today, our rescue team has, re has raised a total of $1,140. Woo! <laughs> uh, the graphic you see before you showcases the various tiers of costs and their corresponding services. These costs were actually calculated in the context of a pre-pandemic world. So before 2020, it took about $3,000 to rescue one North Korean refugee, which is the amount Link at UCLA strives to achieve each year. However, currently the costs have doubled. Uh, it now takes 6,500 about to rescue a North Korean refugee due to inflation um, and uh, rising costs in a pandemic world um, as updated by our Liberty North Korea headquarters. Some of the ways that our rescue team has fundraised towards our goal this year are through collaborations with local restaurants, 
a movie, sc a movie screening of Minari and our ongoing Krispy Kreme fundraiser, which will provide a link for you uh, momentarily. And yeah, and here we go. <laughs> here are some of the ways that you can contribute. Um, so if you would like to help us in becoming an advocate and voice for the North Korean people, here are some opportunities to do so. And so one is uh, the QR code for the one on our your far left, uh, it should be on your screen, should be far left, um, will direct you to our fundraising page, uh, a majority of our rescue team, um, you can donate directly uh, to one of the one of the presidents or to somebody in our rescue team that has reached out to you, who you feel like you have connected with, um, just to anyone on the team, uh, we will be uh, collaborating together to raise the, the $3,000 through that channel. Another way is to buy Krispy Kreme donuts. Ooh, we'll love this and love Krispy Kreme donuts. Um, so how do we do this um, in a pandemic world? Uh, we usually do Krispy Kreme um, on Bruin Walk, but now we can reach a broader audience by selling coupons. So if you scan this QR code, it'll give it'll go straight to the form, and you can fill it out. And you, we can either either uh, send you directly the coupon, or we can deliver donuts to you at an additional cost. And finally, um, just to keep updated with our fundraising events, we have a QR code that uh, links you directly to our Instagram page. Uh, that is one of our main modes of communication. So throughout the year, if we have a fundraising event, uh, this will be your, um, your direct resource um, to, figure, uh, to finding out ways that you can con continue to help uh, Liberty North Korea at UCLA. Um, so just take a moment to uh, screenshot, uh, scan the screen, for um, just for a few seconds, um, and then we'll uh, move on. Okay, and finally, something exciting uh, that we have been putting on uh, on our social media. Um, in addition to these channels, we are also holding a raffle at the end of the speaker event. So if you have not had a chance to enter, now is your chance to take a shot at winning this cozy bundle gift set. I don't know about you guys, but it's pretty cold in LA right now. I think all of California is freezing cold. So doesn't that just look lovely? <laughs> it doesn't look very appealing to you right now. Um, please take a minute to take a screenshot as uh, before or take a picture of the slide for your reference throughout the event. Um, we will be announcing the, the winner at the event. So throughout the event, um, if you choose to um, come on and join um, and to participate, uh, you have the entirety of this event to do so. So uh, just take a moment to kind of read through this and um, see how, I'll just take a screenshot for your reference. All right, awesome. All right, well, thank you everyone. That is it for Link at UCLA. At this time, we'll pass it off to Nam Shikyu for his presentation at AKU. All right, thank you so much, Allison, uh, for that presentation. Uh, we wanna thank your entire team for all the hard work and, and sincere effort that you guys uh, have put forth to support the North Korean people. Uh, to find out more about Link UCLA's work and how to support uh, their email, Instagram, fundraising page, and Venmo information will be posted in the chat box down below. Also, if you haven't already entered into their raffle ticket giveaway, uh, you still have a chance since the winner will be announced at the end of tonight's event. So next, I would like to briefly introduce um, AKU, Alliance for Korea United, and the vision that we are promoting for Korean reunification. Um, so for most of us here in this call, you know, when we think of Korea, oftentimes, we think of you know BTS, K-pop, K-dramas, Squid Game, you know all those kind of things. However, there's actually so much more to Korea than what is portrayed in the media today. Korea, currently, Korea is the only divided nation in the world, and ever since the Korean War, the two sides have gone their separate paths. But the question is, should it continue to be this way when, in fact, Koreans have always been one people? And whenever the topic of unification comes up, you know, there are some that say that it would be an impossible task. However, this lasting division has had major consequences, not only on the Korean Peninsula, uh, but the entire world. So today, North Korea presents an ongoing global security threat with its nuclear arsenal and denies its citizens the most basic human rights and freedoms. 
In the South, the future looks bleak as the elderly population is growing, while birth rates are at an all-time low. And the biggest human tragedy of division has been the separation of millions of families. And there are still so many Koreans, including here in America, that have yet to see their loved ones. We believe that the solution to tackle these pressing issues is reunification of the two Koreas, but not just any reunification where the North absorbs the South or vice versa, or another war breaks out. We are promoting reunification based on the vision of the Korean dream. So as expressed in the award-winning book of that name, the Korean dream is the enduring aspiration of the Korean people to create a free and unified nation that is rooted in Korea's founding spirit known as Hongi Kingan, uh, which translates to living for the benefit of all humanity. So, you know, as a Korean myself, when I first learned about this, I was shocked, but at the same time, really proud to know that Korea was founded on such a high selfless ideal. And we believe that it is this spirit that will allow the Korean people to come together and be inspired to build a new unified nation. So although the Korean people have been divided now for over 70 years, it pales in comparison to 5,000 years of shared history, language, culture, and traditions. So unlike previous efforts toward reunification, which were facilitated mostly by politicians, the Korean dream calls for a grassroots movement where the people bring about change. So Alliance for Korea United aims to gather broad-based support in the Korean diaspora communities here in America. Uh, we believe America is poised to play a major support role for a unified Korea, especially as the champion of human rights and a longstanding ally to the ROK. Um, in addition, one thing that many of us forget and that I was not aware of before is the significant role that Korean Americans played during the March 1st in Korean independence movement back in 1919. So actually the first Koreans that immigrated to the US during the early 1900s actually became the most vocal advocates and supporters for a free and unified Korea during Japanese occupation, including people like An Chang-ho and Seung Min Ri. So today, as Korea is still divided, we want to ignite that fire, fire again and inspire mm -hmm. Korean Americans to participate in the efforts toward reuniting their homeland. And so that is what we're aiming to do here in AKU. So through forums, education programs, community outreach, and youth projects, AKU is working to build consensus and momentum toward a unified Korea based on this vision of the Korean dream. So like in terms of what we've done recently, uh, AKU has co-sponsored various international forums on One Korea, where prominent scholars, policy experts, journalists, and civil society leaders discuss the current circumstances on the Korean Peninsula. Uh, on the youth side, uh, we've been engaging university students through our cultural exchange and language program, Imagine Your Korean Dream, along with speaker events like this one, where we can raise more awareness on these issues. So uh, if this sounds interesting to you and you want to learn more about AKU and our work, uh, you can check out our website, YouTube, and social media. Uh, the links will be posted in the chat box. So uh, that is it for uh, my presentation. Uh, I would like to now introduce our main speaker for tonight's event. Uh, oh Chung Sung is one of the few North Korean defectors who escaped to South Korea via the Joint Security Area. Uh, back in November 2017, Oh was a driver working for the North Korean military at Panmunjo. And during his escape, he drove a car to the military demarcation line that divides North and South Korea and crashed. Oh was shot five times by North Korean soldiers as he was running out of the car and across the border towards South Korea. After being rescued by South Korean soldiers and taken to a hospital, Oh had lost half of his blood. However, he was able to miraculously survive and ever since then, he's been sharing his story to audiences in South Korea and the United States. So before he speaks, we would like to show, uh, we would like to play a short YouTube video from a few years back that covered his story of um, Oh Chung Sung's escape. So let's all watch the video. The images were dramatic. A North Korean defector fleeing across the border, collapsing in a hail of bullets, dragged to safety by South Korean soldiers. Pictures seen around the world. We showed them to the former North Korean soldier who made that stunning escape. This is you running for your life. I still can't believe it's me, Oh Chong Song says. The son of a general in North Korea, he lived on $100 a month. 
Now he lives in a small apartment without his family, but with his freedom. We heard two bursts of about 40 rounds. Lieutenant Commander Daniel McShane was the joint duty officer that day at the DMZ. He had indeed been shot twice in the shoulder, twice in the stomach, and one went in and hit a bone and went up into his lung. Uh, so he was shot five times. The man wounded seemed unlikely to live. Uh, he looked pretty done. What's that like to have your friends, the people that you have served with, firing at you as you run for freedom? If I were in their shoes, I'd have done the same, he says. He was driving. We showed him Savannah's exclusive 2018 report, retracing his steps. Your story was told on American television. I would love to visit the US one day, he says. He wants to say thank you to the American medics who helped to save his life as he was helicoptered to the hospital, as well as to the South Korean people. Every time I watch the video, he says, I realize that I am alive is a miracle. Okay, so that uh, is it for the video. And actually, uh, two years ago, he had uh, visited UCLA to give a speech for a speaker event, which was his first time coming to America. And now we are having him uh, do another speaker event for us. And we're honored to have Oh Chung Sung. Uh, and since he will be speaking in Korean tonight, uh, we will be having our good friend Oh Shim Kim uh, translate for him. So uh, let's all welcome up Oh Chung Sung. 네, 오청성 씨 말씀하세요. 어, 네, 잠시만요. 아, 네, 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. 오청성입니다. Hello, nice to meet you all. My name is 오청성. 아, 네, 저는 이제 2017년에 북한에서 군복무를 하다가 어, JSL을 통해서 탈북을 했고요. 어, 지금 현재는 대한민국 국민입니다. So I have left North Korea in 2017 while I was working um, near the Joint Security Line. Now I am a citizen of the Republic of Korea. 어, 네, 제가 2017년 당시 탈북할 때좀 세계적인 이슈가 돼서 이제 탈북을 하긴 했는데 어, 제가 이제 총을 다섯 발을 맞으면서 어, 대한민국에 탈북을 했고요. 어, 지금은 이제 자유를 맡기하면서 살고 있는 네, 청년입니다. So I, as you have seen in the video, I have been shot five times while I was leaving North Korea, but now I am enjoying the freedom I have as a citizen of a different country. 어, 네, 저의 이제 가정사를 조금 이제 말씀을 드리면, 어, 저는 북한에서 군인 가족이었고요. 어, 북한에서 그렇게 막 배를 걸, 배를 이제 거품에서 살지는 않았고, 북한에서만큼은 그래도 상류층에 속해서, 어, 네, 살아왔던 제 인생이었습니다. To talk about my background, my familiar background, um, in North Korea, I was in pretty much middle upper class um, family. I was part of the family that has served in the army or military. 네. 그래서 일단은 뭐 북한에서 제가 탈북을 하게 된 계기는 어뭐 그렇게 뭐 배고파서 탈북을 다른 사람들 그러니까 한국에 오신 분들 대부분 보시면은 이제 뭐 북한에 진짜 뭐못 먹고 못 살고 진짜 못살 때다 이렇게 생각을 하고 탈북을 하신 분들이 되게 많으신데 어 저는 뭐 북한에서 뭐 이제 못 먹고 못 살아서 한국에 온 것이 아니라 진짜 그 자유 하나만 찾아서 예, um, normally, for those I've met, the North Korean defectors I've met in Korea, um, I have seen them um, have many similar reasons of leaving North Korea, which is due to um, poverty. But for me, um, instead of poverty, I was um, sighting for freedom alone. 네, 그래서 제가 이제 탈북을 할때 총을 다섯 발을 맞았는데, 어, 제가 맞은 총이 그 AK 서총이거든요. Um, so the, I have been shot five times, uh, five by five bullets, and it was the uh, a small handgun, AK handgun. 음, 네, AK 서총이었고, 어, 이제 
온몸에 이제 간통상을 여러 군데 이제 간통상이 됐었고, 어, 병원에서 대수술 두 번을 받았었고, 그 다음에 한 보름 뒤에 제가 의식을 해보겠던 것 같아요. So I have totally been um, impaled by those bullets from the rifle. I have spent almost half a month in the hospital um, to recover my consciousness. 음, 네, 제가 이제 앞서서 이제 자유 하나만 보고 기준을 했다고 말씀을 드렸는데, 어, 제가 다섯 발의 총상을 맞고 이제 병원에서 보름 만에 의식을 차렸을 때, 아 이게 자유구나 하고 제일 안도의 숨이 나왔던 것이. 어 이제 눈을 딱 뜨자 바람에 응급실 천정에 대한민국 태국기가 걸려 있었거든요. 음, 그 태국기를 딱 보는 순간에 진짜 저는 너무도 안도의 숨이 쉬어졌고 그 태국기가 아 이게 진짜 저는 북한에서 살면서 그 북한 인공기에 대한 아무런 감정도 없었는데 그 태국기가 저한테는 진짜 큰 힘이었던 것 같아요. Um, the first moment, the first feeling of freedom that I have experienced was when I opened my eyes after catching or um, recovering my consciousness in that hospital. And the first thing I've seen when I opened my eyes was the Korean flag, the Republic of Korean flag uh, up on the ceiling. And I didn't really have any feelings for the flags of the, the um, North Korea, but I felt Um, the relief and the sense of freedom when seeing the flag of Republic of Korea. 그래서 제가 이제 북한에서는 솔직히 이건 좀 어, 웃긴 얘기긴 하지만 북한에서 뭐 총을 진짜 저는 군복무를 한국으로 얘기하면 그 JSA라는 것이 좀 약간 특수부대 같은 개념인데 거기서 매일과 같이 총을 쐈어요. 총을 쏘다가 이제 한국에 와서 또 제가 쏘던 그 AK 어쩜 사오미를 맞았고. 한국에 와서 한 3, 4년 이제 생활을 하다 보니까, 어, 한국은 무기소지가 이제 불법이고, 또뭐 이제 그 운영이 되는 사극장 가면 소총밖에 안 되도록 소총 이제 권총이나 이제 소총이 되는데, 그래서 제가 AK가 이제 쏘고 싶어가지고, 미국에 제가, 어, 2년 전에 그 AKU 이제, 에서 초대받고 이제 한번 이제 제가 갔던 적이 있었어요. 그때 이제 제가 그 AK를 한 500발 정도 이제 샀던 기억이 나네요. 네. Wow. So um, this is a little funny story, but when I was in the military serving as a soldier, um, I used to shoot a lot of um, guns or That was my training to shoot a lot of rifles every single day because the um, base that I was serving in near the joint security line, um, we, that was what we were doing. But compared to that in South Korea, no one is allowed to have any army, uh, army um, no one's allowed to be armed, right? So it was very um, unlikely for me to have a chance to shoot. Um, even if going to a shooting range, they would only have small guns like a um, pistol or something. <clears throat> But one time I was invited to go to the US um, because I was invited by AKU. And when I had the chance to go to the shooting range in the US, I um, remember shooting 500 shots with a rifle. 어, 네, 제가 이제 처음으로 이제 맞았던 총상이 이제 등 뒤로 맞아서 심장을 간통했던 총상이었는데, 그때 제가 이제, 아, 내가 총을 맞았구나라는 의식이 들었어요. 그래서, 아, 나는 이제 죽었구나라는 생각이 들었는데, 그때도 저는 진짜, 어, 그냥 자유 하나만 보고도, 자유 하나만 보고, 진짜 그 총구 앞에 이제 굴하지 않고, 사실, 뭐, 영화에서 보면, 뭐, 총을 쏜다고 했을 때 사람들이 진짜 오줌을 지리거나, 아, 총코 앞에서는 무릎을 꿇는 이런 약간 그런 영화의 장면들이 많잖아요. 근데 진짜 저는 현실에서 그 총코가 자유보다는 제가 두렵진 않았어요. 그래서 저는 자유를 선택했던 것 같아요. And um, to share the experience of me being getting shot, when um, I actually got shot through my heart. And when I got shot that moment, I realized, oh, I'm dead now. Um, I realized that it's pretty different from um, the scenes that we see in movies where people um, piss in their pants or um, just get really shocked and scared in front of the um, sight of a pistol being um, 
geared towards you. But honestly, I really realized that um, this is worth it for freedom. 어, 네. 그래서 제가 진짜 사람들이 어, 그렇게 너는 그 총을 맞으면서까지도 어, 기술을 해야 했었냐라고 이제 질문을 저한테 많이 했었는데 저는 이제 저희 아빠가 뭐 이제 북한 군인이었었고 북한 장교였었고 항상 제가 제가 어릴 때 아빠가 저한테 하신 말씀이 진짜 그 김부자한테만 충성을 다해야 하고 이 나라를 위해서 살아야 된다는 그런 약간 개인 우상화를 저희한테 많이 교육을 시켰어요. 그래서 저는 제 삶인데 누구를 위해서 산다는 것 자체가 너무도 싫었고, 어, 그 다음에 이제 북한에서 이제 뭐 여러 계기를 통해서 진짜 모든 진짜 수많은 사람들을 총살하는 그런 현장들을 목격을 하다 보니까, 아, 여기서는 또 어렸을 때는 그 세뇌 교육을 당했어요. 저도 당하다가 크면서 자본주의라는 걸 알아가면서, 아, 여기는 어 진짜 내가 배워왔던 그런 북한이 아니구나라는 걸 느낀 다음에는 어 자유를 찾아서 와야겠다라는 생각을 하고 탈북을 했던 것 같아요. To explain what how I grew up in my family under um, a father who served as an officer in the military, he has emphasized a lot about idealizing and idolizing the North Korean di um, dictators and dictator as well as the upper um, people who are responsible for the country. And I was very sick of it. Of course, I had received all the brainwashing education um, to be part of a citizen in that country. But um, I, as I was growing up, I learned more about capitalism and individuality. And I learned that um, individuals um, should have freedom. 음, 네. 그래서 저는 이제 그 다섯 발을 맞고 사람들이 제가 살았다는 걸 되게 신기해 하거든요. 어떻게 한발 맞아도 죽는 사람들이 보통인데, 저는 어떻게 심장도 간통하고 다리랑 뭐 팔, 그 다음에 촉추, 그 다음에 복부 한 통, 한 발이 간통하고 이렇게 했는데, 어떻게 살았냐라는 질문을 되게 많이 했어요. 근데, 어, 진짜 뭐, 첫 번째로 대한민국 우술도 진짜 저, 좋다고 저는 생각을 해요. 북한에 있었으면 아마 제가 월북을 할때 뭐 한국군에서 총을 맞고 월북을 했다. 북한군에 가서 수술을 하는 북한 땅에 가서 제가 뭐그 총상을 수술을 했다면 아마 저는 진짜 이 나라에 없는 목숨일 수도 있어요. 진짜 대한민국이기 때문에 또 저를 살렸고 그리고 또 저는 이제 한국에 와서 어 교회를 다니기 시작했는데 어 진짜 하나님이 저를 살리셨다고 어 생각을 하게 됩니다. So I received a lot of questions about how miraculously I survived after getting shot five times. Um, if you see, I have been impaled by the bullets in my heart, as well as my stomach. And I've been shot on my legs, arms, and my spine. So it's a miracle that I'm alive and people ask me a lot about it. But I really think that um, the medical um, treatment and um, quality in South Korea is pretty amazing. If I had I been um, escaping South Korea to go to North Korea and receive the medical care there, I don't think I would have been alive. And since I have found my freedom, I've been going to churches um, to attend. And I really do believe that God has saved my life. 그래서 뭐 탈북을 하고 나서 지금 현재는 뭐 대한민국에서 진짜 제가 하고 싶었던 일, 그 다음에 이제 먹고 싶었던 거, 또 여행, 이제 제가 가고 싶은 나라들, 이런 것도 이제 뭐 시간 날 때마다 짬짬이 하고 있고요. 어, 이제, 음, 제가 탈북을 하고 나서 제 인생이 바뀌었다고 생각을 하면, 어, 제 자유를 찾은 것 같아요. 저는 제 자유를 찾았다고 생각을 하고, 음, 어, 어떻게 말씀을 드려요? 제 일단은 그냥 제 자유를 진짜 만끽할 수 있는 게 너무도 이제 좋은 것 같아요. Um, a few things that I've been able to do now that I live in South Korea is to go travel whenever I can and be or ask the things I want to ask. And really, the only way to put how my change, uh, how my life changed since I escaped North Korea is that I have freedom. It's all mine.
근데 지금 이제 북한에서 저도 이제 2017년도에 왔으니까 온지가 뭐한 5년 정도 이제 됐잖아요. 그래서 어, 북한에 대해서 또 궁금하실 부분이 있을 것 같아서 어, 일단은 이따가 뭐 질의응답 시간이 있어 뭐 질문 받겠지만 어, 현재 북한은 어, 예전과는 다른 어, 많이 변화된 모습의 북한입니다. So since I have been here uh, in South Korea for about five years now, since I left North Korea in 2017, I assume that I'll have a lot of questions from you later um, of the session, how North Korea is like right now. Um, but to say it right now, just a little bit, uh, it's very different than how it used to be. 일단 북한의 이제 그 수도라고 하는 평양과 지방을 나눌 수가 있겠는데요. 어 이제 예를 들어서 어 한국에 이제 사시던 분들이 북한에 이제 종종 뭐 이제 가수들이 초대돼서 이제 노래하러 가거나 이제 여행을 간 사람들이 있어 갔다 와서 하나 같이 얘기하는 사람들이 진짜 평양과 지방은 극과 극이라는 말씀을 되게 많이 하시거든요. 어 현재 평양은 거의 한국이나 한국의 어디 도시라고 보시면 돼요. 진짜 교통이 정체가 되고 사람들이 지하철 타고 다니고 버스 타고 다니고 진짜 평양시만큼은 어 한국의 어떤 도시라고 저는 말씀을 드리고 싶고요. 그와 반대인 지방들은 진짜 거의 뭐 사람 살 곳이 못 된다고 네, 보시면 됩니다. So... Um, to help you picture how the capital city Pyongyang looks like and how the countrysides, all the rest of the lands of North Korea, uh, they are polar opposites. So Pyongyang, you can just imagine it as a normal, any city in South Korea. There are a lot of traffic jams, there are buses, people use um, subway or train systems and really um, unlike that, all the countrysides are terribly uninhabitable. And it's very interesting because even um, talking about Pyongyang, even some singers are from South Korea are invited to perform and things like that. <laughs> 그래서 뭐 제가 이제 북한에서 군복무를 8년 했다고 말씀을 드렸는데 제가 군복무 할때 당시에도 어 저는 지방에서도 하고 이제 뭐 JS에서도 군복무를 했었는데 어 어떤 신뢰가 있었냐면요 어 저희 부대는 아니고 타 부대에서 있어, 있었던 일인데 제가 직접 이제 실제 있은 일이거든요 어그 어떠한 군인이 그 부대에서 그 밥을 줬는데 하루에 감자 다섯 알을 약간 삶은 감자 다섯 알을 줘가지고 사실 성인이 그 20대 진짜 막 피가 끓는 성인이 감자 다섯 알을 하루에 먹어서 배가 고프겠어요 안 고프겠어요 진짜 배가 고프거든요 배가 고프니까 근데 매일 그렇게 주고 기름 한 방울도 없는 그런 진짜 무염 식단이다 보니까 분인이 너무 배고파서 주민 민가에 내려가서 도둑질을 한 거예요 도둑질을 해가지고 거기 있던 뭐 주민 민가에 있는 어떤 뭐 이제 식료품을 훔쳐 먹었겠죠 먹었는데 주인한테 들켰어요. 근데 그 주인한테 들켰는데 그 주인이 부대에다 또 신고를 할까봐 그 주인을 죽였어요. 진짜로 죽이고 그 그냥 죽인 거에 끝이면 진짜 말도 안 하겠는데 그 주인 시, 죽이고 그 시체 위에다가 이제 장작 더미를 얼려놓고 시발류를 부어서 이제 불 질러 버린 거예요. 진짜 이런 게 말도 안 되는 그런 네, 북한의 실상도 있고. 네, 또 평양은 그와 정반대인 네, 그런 상황입니다. Um, to share a story, for me, I have served in the military in joint security line as well as other countryside bases for about eight years total. Um, I have one story to share from a different soldier. It's not my story, but in the countryside, it was very common for soldiers to be served only five, uh, five things of um, boiled potatoes to eat for a day. And to think about a full grown up men who are very young in their 20s serving all day in the military to be surviving on just that, uh, you can see how devastating it is. And there was a time or an incident where this one soldier was so hungry, uh, there was no nothing served besides that, that they went down to the um, civilian area in a village nearby uh, to steal food from a home 
but uh, the owner of that home saw him, saw that soldier stealing, and the soldier was too afraid that the owner or the civilian would report him um, to the upper people uh, in the military, that he was so scared that he actually shot him or killed him to death. And not only that, not only leaving the corpse behind, he actually burned the corpse um, using all the firewoods and oil. And this, these kinds of things happen because they were so underserved with meals. 음, 네. 그래서 지금 제가 이제 탈북을해서 살고 있는 현재 살고 있는 곳은 대한민국 서울이고요. 제가 원래 북한에 있던 고향은 그 항해북도 개성이라고 하는 곳인데요. 그 JSA 바로 옆에가 저희 집이에요. 그래서 진짜 그 저는 한국에 와서 통일의 중요성을 느끼는 게 뭐냐면 딱, 딱, 딱 진짜 단한 가지인데 저희 부모님들 다 북한에 살아 계시고 저희 뭐 가족들도 다 북한에 계세요. 근데 저 제가 지금 살고 있는 대한민국 서울에서 원래 살던 저희 집까지 진짜 자동차로 30분밖에 안 걸리거든요. 30분밖에 안 걸리는데 내 부모를 볼 수가 없는 이런 가슴 아픈 현실이니까 저는 진짜 꼭 통일이 돼야 된다고 생각을 하는 사람 중에 한 명입니다. Um, and the situation is very different from Pyongyang. And um, as of me, I'm living in Seoul, the capital city of Korea, South Korea. And to compare that, my parents were still alive in North Korea. Their homes uh, is right next to JSA, where I used to serve the Joint Security Line. Uh, it's in Hamgyong, <laughs> North Province, um, in a city called Kaesong. And in reality, by car, uh, that place, my parents' home, and the place I'm living in Seoul, is only a 30 minute drive. But I, because of this, I, I'm one of those people who think that unification of Korea must happen because it's too cruel to be living in a re reality where you can't even see your parents where you're living so close from them. 아, 다시네. 아, 네. 어, 일단은 뭐 그래서 제가 지금 음, 한국에 와서는 이제 뭐 통일에 관련돼서 뭐 여러 가지 이제 뭐 강연이나 어, 이런 활동을 되게 많이 하고 있긴 합니다. 그래서 어, 저는 진짜 통일이 꼭 됐으면 좋겠고 어, 뭐 한국에서도 살아보고 남한에서도 이제 한국에서도 살아보고 북한에서도 살아봤는데 진짜 언젠가는 꼭 통일이 된다고 저는 생각을 합니다. So I have been giving a few or many speeches in Korea or South Korea about unification, hoping that it can happen. Um, but yes, I do envision and I believe that it will happen. 음 진짜 뭐 어려서는 그 김부자에 대한 북한 사회에 대한 그런 이제 우상화 이제 세뇌를 시킬 수는 있어도 지금 뭐 케이팝 드라마나 이제 케이팝 노래들 이제 그런 게 한, 북한에 많이 이제 널리 퍼지다 보니까 어 그런 것들이 사람들이 이제 하나 둘 이제 믿기 시작하면 북한도 이제 곧 통일이 된다고 저는 생각을 하고 어 진짜 말도 안 되는 뭐그 남북한의 50년도 전쟁이 일어났던 게 진짜 한국이 이제 북침을 해서 전쟁이 일어났다. 저는 이제 북한에 있을 때 개인적으로 그렇게 배웠는데 한국에 와서 뭐, 뭐 봤더니 그게 아닌 거예요. 진짜 북침, 북한 사람들이 이제 남침을 한 거지. 저는 배우기를 이제 진짜 어, 남조선 개례라고 하는데 어, 진짜 개례 도당이 이제 50년도 6월 25일 날 어, 북침을 했다. 이런 진짜 말도 안 되는 세뇌 교육을 시키고 저는 진짜 어렸을 때 그걸 진짜 믿었었거든요. Um, and these days a lot of K-pop K-dramas have been spread or is slowly spreading in North Korea. And I believe that the more people realize about the reality, um, that is way different than what they have been taught. Uh, slowly unification or thoughts for that can happen. Uh, in when you're growing up in North Korea, we are brainwashed, right? Educated about the idolism, um, about the Kim family, uh, the dictator, um, our Lord. We are taught even um, about the Korean history wrongly. We are taught that Korean or South Korean soldiers and the military have attacked North Korea. And that's how the Korean War in 1950s happened. 
but that wasn't the reality when I came down here and learned about the history again. 어 그만큼 이제 북한에서 이제 자기들이 잘못했던 그런 내용들을 감추고 북한 주민들에게 오로지 그 김부자에 대한 사상만 심어주다 보니까 북한에서 아직도 깨어 있지 못한 사람들이 많아요. 근데 현재 지금 탈북하신 그 고향 그 북한에서 탈북하신 분들이 대한민국에 이제 3만 2천 명 정도가 살고 계시고 또 이제 뭐 영국이나 뭐 캐나다 미국에서도 살고 계신 이제 북한 주민들도 계세요. 그리고 또뭐 링크나 이런 K AKU 쪽 이런 이제 좋은 일을 하시는 분들을 통해서 저는 앞으로 꼭 통일이 될 거라고 생각을 합니다. And um, but, however, there are a lot of North Korean defectors fighting um, to educate and learn more about unification and hoping for unification. There are many um, North Korean defectors, almost 42,000 North Korean defectors in Korea and also living overseas in Canada and the US and other places. Uh, with those people, as well as all the hardworking people, such as people in AKU and other organizations working together um, through these, I believe that Korean unification can happen. I have so much more to share. But, um, I have a lot to share, but I would like to receive a lot of questions from you and answer. So I would like to conclude my introduction here. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Chung Sang, let's give him a big round of applause um, for sharing your story, um, for sharing with us this very traumatic experience that you've had, but due to your relentless pursuit for freedom, um, you know, it's, it's truly an inspiring story for all of us and something that it's unimaginable. Um, so thank you so much. And also thank you for uh, expressing your desire and hopes for the unification of the Korean Peninsula, where one day, you know, you will be able to uh, finally go back to your hometown and, and be reunited with your family. Uh, so thank you so much. And also thank you to Onshim for translating so well. Um, we will now open up the floor to a Q&A where you guys can directly ask any questions uh, you have for our speakers. So in terms of if you want to ask a question, um, all you have to do is click on the reactions tab, which is down below, then click on the raise hand button, and I will call your name and you can um, yourself. So then Onshim will translate your question to the speaker, as well as his response. Um, if you don't want to speak uh, in the camera, uh, there's also the option of typing your question in the chat box. And while we're having our Q&A, uh, I can also read off the questions from the chat. So. Uh, uh, we can begin our Q&A. So who would like to ask uh, the first question to our speaker? Okay, looks like we have Susanna Kim who raised her hand. Susanna, you may um, unmute yourself and ask your question to Oh Chung Song. Hi, uh, so thank you so much for speaking. My question um, is, are there any like unique struggles that North Korean defectors face while living in South Korea? 네, 어, 수잔아 김께서 어, 일단 말씀해 주셔서 감사하다고 하시고요. 질문이 어, 북한에서 탈북하신 분들이 대한민국에서 살아가실 때 약간 특이하게 특이한 경험이나 좀 힘든 점, 힘든 경험들이 있는지 물어보고 계십니다. 음, 어, 일단은 그 대한민국에 와서 대한민국 그 국적을 받아요. 국적을 받는데 국적을 받는다고 해서 그 북한에서 살던 어명이 벗겨지는 게 아니라 어, 한국에서 이제 사신 분들이 항상 그좀 이중 쪽으로 이렇게 보는 시선이 조금은 있어가지고, 어, 그거 때문에 조금 오해받으신 분들도 되게 많아요. 어, 그렇고, 뭐 이제 한국에 살아가면서 뭐 힘든 점은, 어, 여기서 뭐 태어나서 이제 뭐 모든 스펙을 밟은 게 아니다 보니까 북한에서 갑자기 살다가 뭐 태어났는데 북한이었고 뭐 어느 날 갑자기 탈북을 했는데 그게 뭐 20대거나 30대거나 뭐 40대 돼서 오신 분들도 많고 하다 보니까 갑자기 이제 생활 환경이 바뀌면은 그 나라 문화 뭐 이제 모든 언어 이런 것도 다 중요하니까 조금 이제 어려움을 겪으시는 분들이 되게 많은 것 같아요. So um, 
we first have to receive the citizenship from South Korea, but even after that, it's actually pretty difficult um, living together with the people in Korea because there's sometimes uh, different opinions, like um, two two sided opinions or um, uh, attitudes that we receive. So a lot of people who come from North Korea have received. Um, those kind of attitudes and have to live with some misperceptions from them. Another thing is that because uh, North Korean defectors did not grow up in South Korea, some people uh, escape North Korea after they have turned uh, or they're in their 20s, 30s, or 40s. So a lot of lifestyles um, and environments change. So the culture and language and other things we have to um, kind of struggle to adjust. 네, 그리고 뭐또한 가지 중요한 거는, 어, 북한에서 오실 때 이제 가족분들이랑 같이 오시는 분들도 계신데, 또 이제 저처럼 이제 혼자 오시는 분들이 되게 많거든요. 근데 혼자 오신 분들 같은 경우에는 진짜 너무 외롭고, 또 이제 고향에 있는 가족들도 이제 보고 싶고 하다 보니까, 어, 이제 약간 가족에 대한 그리움이 되게 힘든 부분인 것 같아요. Another thing to add is there are North Korean defectors who leave or escape North Korea together with their family members. But like my case, there are people who come alone. And for those, uh, we miss our homeland a lot. Uh, we get nostalgic and want to see our families a lot. So it gets really lonely. That's all. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Susanna, for that question uh, and uh, Chung Sung for that in-depth response. Um, we had a question come in the chat from John Loquito. I probably don't I hope I'm not butchering the last name, but he asks, have you been able to contact with your family in North Korea? John Loquito 씨가 물어보시는데, 어, 우청 성 씨의 가족분들과 연락이 닿으신 적이 있었나요? 어, 아, 연락... 음, 음, 저도 한국에 와가지고 어, 예전에는 이제 뭐 탈북을 하게 되면 북한에 있는 가족들을 청산시키거나 뭐 이제 정치범 수용소라고 해서 그런데 보낸 사례들이 되게 많거든요. 그래서 저도 이제 뭐 저희 아빠 직급도 북한에서 조금 있었고 저도 이제 한국에 올때 막 진짜 이슈화 되게 한국을 오다 보니까 아, 제 가족들이 어떻게 되지 않았을까라는 걱정을 처음에 왔을 때 제일 먼저 했던 것 같아요. 그래서 이제 그 요즘은 이제 한국에 이제 오신 분들이 그 중국의 브로커라는 분들이 계시는데 그 중국이랑 북경 그 근처에 그 주, 중국 전화기를 이제 들여보내서 이제 통화 국제 전화 형식으로 하는 경우가 되게 많더라고요. 그래서 저도 그쪽으로 해서 알아봐서 어, 연락이 간신히 닿았어요. 네, 그래서 본인들 뭐 무사히 잘 지내시고 네 그런, 그런 상황입니다. So uh, a lot of people know that back in the day when North Korean defectors would escape. Uh, it was pretty common or well known that the rest of the family left in North Korea were shot to death or sent to concentration camps. Uh, and especially for me, my journey of escaping North Korea, as you saw, saw in the videos, uh, became a big issue globally. So I was more worried about my family who were left behind. But um, there are many brokers in China where they they um, have phone booths um, set up near the border between China and North Korea. So I was able to contact my family through that. And I um, confirmed that my family or my parents are well. Great. Hey. Well, uh, thank you so much uh, for that question. Um, we have uh, someone who raised uh, their hand uh, in the call, Masayoshi Tora. Uh, you may unmute yourself and ask your question to our speaker. Yes, um, uh, my question, oh yes, um, I'm Masa and I'm a high school student. And my question is how can we as young people help achieve Korean unification, reunification? 저는, uh... 고등학생인 마사요시라고 하고요. 저처럼 젊은 학생들 사람들이 통일을 위해 어떤 노력을 할수 있을지 묻고 싶습니다. 
저희 어떤 노력을 근데 저도 뭐 한국에서 통일을 위해서 딱히 크게 노력을 했다고 저 본인도 얘기할 수는 없는 것 같아요. 이게 진짜 저희가 바라는 통일이 뭐 어떻게 어떻게 돈으로 될수 있는 것도 아니지만 어 저는 지금 현재 어그 질문 주신 님께 이제 답변을 드리자면 어 저는 어 내가 내 입장에서 말씀을 드리자면 어, 저는 제 입장은 그래요. 그 통일이 됐을 때 제가 북한에 가서 무엇을 할까? 어, 한국에서 내가 어떤 것을 준비해야지 통일이 됐을 때 북한에 가서 어, 이러이러한 것들, 뭐 예를 들어서 한국에만 있는, 북한에는 없는 그런 것들을 제가 준비해서 어, 통일이 됐을 때그 북한 사람들에게 제가 나눠줄 수 있는 지식이나 무엇이 됐든 네, 준비하려고 노력 중입니다. So um, I have a hard time thinking about that because for me too, I can't really say that I contributed so much for the unification of Korea. But um, and if you think about it, unification can't happen just um, through economic way or by money. But for my case, what I'm doing right now is um, I'm trying to think about what can I be doing when we go back to North Korea or when I go back to North Korea after unification happens. So I'm thinking more about what can I prepare in South Korea. Um, for example, there are things that only exist in South Korea, not in North Korea. So maybe I can think about bringing that there. So these are the things I'm thinking about. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Masa, for that uh, question and Ochung Sung for that response. We have Bela Dermer who raised uh, their hand. Bela, you may unmute yourself and ask your question to Ochung Sung. 혹시 한국말로 물어봐도 돼요? 어, 네. 네. Of course. <웃음> 어, 그 남, 남북 동일에 대한 질문이 있는데요. 그 혹시 나, 동일을 원한다고 하셨는데 혹시 한국에 와서 동일을 뭐 반대해서 혹시 비판을 받거나 미움을 받은 적이 있으신가요? 어... 일단 그, 통일을... 일단 그 질문을 아. 영어로 아, 통역 아, 하시면 okay. 됩니다. 먼저. So the question was, uh, Mr. Oh, you said that you want North Korea and South Korea to be united. Uh, then have you received any criticism for your opinion like that? 뭐 저는 이제 정치에 대해서 되게 관심이 없는데 어, 그, 한국에 오니까 뭐 좌파 우파 해가지고 되게 보수 진보가 많이 나뉘더라고요. 뭐 이제 여러 당들도 있고, 이렇게 저는 한국에 와서 그걸 알았는데, 북한은 당이 하나잖아요. 조선 노동당이. 근데 이제 한국은 뭐 이제 민주당도 있고, 더불어민주당도 있고, 이제 뭐 진짜 여러 당들이 많은데, 어, 진짜 제가 뭐 방송을 활동을 한다던가, 아니면 공개적인 어느 석상에서 제가 어떤 발언을 한다던가 이런 것 때문에 어 댓글로 이제 그 기사의 댓글 뭐 영상의 댓글로 이제 저 새끼는 북한에서 왜 왔냐 총 맞으면서까지 왜 왔냐 우리 세금 아깝다 다시 북한으로 가라 뭐 이런 등등 반응들을 봤을 때뭐 사실 그냥 뭐 진짜 어떻게 보면 상처이기도 하지만은 내가 이제 진짜 그렇게 목숨을 걸고 한 대한민국인데 또 한국에 와서 이런 얘기까지 내가 들으면서 살아야 되냐라고 생각할 때도 있어요. 근데 그거는 뭐 국서수 일부 사람들일 뿐 크게 신경을 안 쓰지만 어 그래도 이제 조금 상처가 이제 됐던 계기였던 것 같아요. 근데 뭐 저는 뭐 그런 것보다도 뭐어 그냥 뭐 옛날에 뭐 북한 석담이 이런 말이 있거든요. 개는 지저도 이제 행렬은 간다라는 석담이 있는데 뭐그 사람들이 뭐 그렇게 한다고 해서 이제 뭐 통일이 이루어질 거는 저는 이루어진다고 생각을 합니다. 저는 그 이루어지길 바라는 사람 중에 한 명이고요. 네. 걔는 지저도 뭐가 간다고 하셨죠? 행렬. 행렬이야, 네. 아, 네, 행렬. 네. Um, so he answers that he is not so um, particularly interested in politics, but um, especially because there's only one party, right? Um, 
um, what's it called, Korean Workers Party in North Korea. And so it was really um, eye-opening to see that there are many opinions in South Korea, especially um, the, those conservative or um, progressive-minded uh, left and right parties. And there are many parties as well. But um, uh, through my public interviews or videos, there are a lot of um, comments that I've received in like the articles or websites. Uh, and a lot of people would say, uh, why is he here? Why did he sacrifice it or risk his life um, getting shot and all? Why did he have to come all the way to South Korea? My um, tax that I'm paying is wasted and things like that, all the bad comments. But I um, try to ignore because those are the minor already opinions. And it does become a big, um, it, it is hurtful, but there is a saying in North Korea um, that I'll try my best to translate. It's like, even if the dog barks, the march continues. So I believe that those things just pass. All right, thank you so much, uh, Bela, for that question and uh, our speaker for your really in-depth response. Um, we have Lauren Brown who raised her hand in the meeting. Lauren, you may unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, um, so I'm Lauren. I was just kind of wondering, uh, which way do you think is like the most likely way that Korea will be unified? And like, what do you think politically like the government should do in relation to that? My question is, what is the most likely way to be unified? What do you think politically like the government should do in relation to that? My question is, what is the most likely way to be unified? What do you think politically like the Oh, I don't know how to do it, but I don't know how to do it. Actually, Bukhan is now supporting the people who are 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 the 또 이제 뭐 아까도 말씀드렸다시피 뭐 이제 그 한국 드라마 노래를 그 다음에 이제 그 예전에 이제 운영이 됐었던 개성 개성 공업 지구를 통해서 어 많이 이제 그 북한 사람들 생각도 깨, 깨어가고 있고 어 그걸로 통한 이제 북한의 그 붕괴라고 하면 될수 있겠는데 그런 어 무너지는 날이 저는 올 거라고 이제 개인적으로 생각을 하고요. 음 so I'm actually also curious about how that would look like, but personally, I think that the brainwashing education for all the individuals in North Korea will be um, the destroyed. Because as I mentioned earlier, a lot of Korean culture through K-pop um, songs and things like that have been um, spreading within people. And a lot of people are learning more about capitalism, more about other things. And there's also a Kaesong industrial organization um, that I think people are learning more from. So I believe that eventually that um, idea, idol, idolism will be destroyed. Hey, thank you, Lauren, for that question. Uh, we also had a list of pre-event questions that came in through the registration link, and I just want to ask uh, one of those questions. Um, this is from Christopher Dickens from UCLA. Uh, Christopher asks, how did you initially react to the viral nature of the video of your escape? Uh, 일단 어, 캘리포니아 주립대학 LA에 있는 주립대학의 학생인 크리스토퍼 씨가 어, 오청성 씨의 비디오 그 탈북 비디오 영상이 어, 공론화 되었을 때 어, 당, 당사자로서 반응을 어떤 반응을 보이셨는지 궁금합니다. 어그 영상이 이제 아, 엄청 이슈화 됐을 때는 저는 이제 병원에 있을 때라. 어, 사실 몰랐어요. 그런 영상이 이슈화 됐던지도 몰랐고, 저는 외부와 단절돼서 이제 병원에서 3개월을 생활을 하고, 국정원이라는 곳에서 제가 또 조사를 또몇 개월 받다 보니까, 
거의 한 1년, 아, 6개월, 한 8개월 정도는 제가 그 영상을 못 봤던 것 같아요. 그래서 한국의 사회생활을 초, 이제 시작하면서 그 영상을 처음에 봤을 때, 어, 사실 저도 지금도 사실 보고 싶지 않은 그런 영상인 것 같아요. 네. So actually when it went viral, I was still in the hospital, so I was not aware of it. I spent about three months uh, spending in the hospital recovering, as well as being investigated in the NIS. So part of the video, I actually, even till this day, I fear or do not want to watch. Hey, thank you so much, uh, Chris, for that, for that question. Uh, we have Mark Bromwell who raised his hand in the meeting. Mark, you may unmute yourself and ask your question to the speaker. Yeah, hello, everybody from Germany. Um, thank you very much for this uh, really uh, precious and interesting uh, testimony and story. Um, I wish you all the very best uh, for your future. Um, what interests me especially is the topic of freedom. And we live in free countries, also here in Europe, many free countries here. And I think many people don't really appreciate freedom. So it interests me, especially um, why the speaker who I'm so old thinks that freedom is so important. He mentioned two things, um, travel, to be able to travel, and also to be able to question everything. Um, is there anything else he would add to that? Why freedom is so important for him? That he risked his life for freedom. 안녕하세요. 독일에서 인사드리고요. 간증 좋은 간증해 주셔서 감사합니다. 어, 당신의 미래가 밝기를 바라면서 질문을 드리자면 어, 자유 국가에 사는 사람들 어, 저는 유럽 사람으로서 자유 국가들이 많은데 거기 사는 사람들은 자유에 대해서 어, 많이 인식하거나 되게 감사를 느끼지 못하는 것 같은데 어, 당신께서 아, 아까 어, 자유가 왜 중요한지 몇 가지 말씀해 주신 것 같아요. 여행을 할수 있고 또 어, 하고 싶은 거할수 있고 묻고 싶은 걸 묻고 물을 수 있고 그런 거에 대해서 말씀해 주셨는데 어, 또 다른 이유가 있으신지 자유가 왜 목숨을 걸고 어, 찾을 만큼 중요한 것인지 더 얘기해 주실 수 있으면 좋겠습니다. 어... 일단 그 모든 자유가 중요하지만 어, 한국은 음, 언어의 자유가 있잖아요. 내가 하고 싶은 얘기를 마음대로 할수 있고 사실 뭐 어, 한국에서는 뭐 솔직히 제가 주변에서 많이 봤는데 어, 대통령도 욕하는 사람들이 계시더라고요. 근데 북한에서 대통령을 욕했다가 <웃음> 솔직히 청산을 당하는 사람도 봤어요. 네, 그렇게도 보고 뭐 진짜 별거 아닌데 신문지 신문지 신문지에 그 김일성 청상화가 있는데 그걸 찢었다고 깜빵 정치범 수용소에 가는 경우도 있는데 솔직히 저는 이게 너무도 황당하다고 생각을 하거든요. 네, 진짜 신문지 하나 잘못 찢었는데 한국이나 진짜 북한 빼고 전 세계 어느 나라 신문지에 그 신문지 하나 찢었다고 깜판 가는 나라는 아마 저는 북한밖에 없다고 생각을 합니다. So um, of course all kinds of freedom are all equally important, but especially in Korea, one thing I cherish is the freedom of speech, the fact that you can say things you want to say. Um, I've even seen people uh, talk bad about their own president. And if you have done that in North Korea, you would definitely be shot or sent to concentration camps. There's even a ridiculous story where someone was sent to a camp because um, they ripped a piece of newspaper that had a photo of Kim Il-sung on it. And think about it, like what kind of um, country anywhere in the world other than North Korea would be sending people to a concentration camp for ripping a piece of paper? 어, 그런 것도 있고 뭐 제가 언어의 자유를 말씀드렸다면 뭐. 사실 보는 것도 내가 내 눈으로 아무거나 볼 수가 있잖아요. 근데 북한에서는 한국 드라마를 내 눈으로 봤다고 그것도 이제 깜빵 보내는 경우가 있으니까 사실 모든 것에 자유가 없다고 저는 생각을 합니다. 북한이. And I've mentioned 
um, freedom of speech, but even for seeing things, uh, those are restricted in North Korea because people are shot to death or sent to camps for watching K-dramas or any other foreign things. So I believe that nowhere in North Korea you have any freedom. Great. Well, thank you so much, Mark, for that question. Um, we are now a little bit over uh, seven o'clock, so um, we may have time for maybe one or two more questions if anyone is eager to ask a question uh, to our speaker, Oh Chung Sung. Um, so who would like, does anyone uh, want to ask another, the next question to our speaker or? If not, um, there is a question that did come in through the registration link. Um, so we'll do the we'll do the registration link question, and then uh, Daniel, you'll be uh, you'll have the last question for Chung Sung. So um, the question that came in through uh, the registration link is from Osvaldo Livera. Uh, and this person asks, "What are the North North Korean sentiments for reunification among young people and in general?" So. Uh, do young people and, and people in general in North Korea, do they want reunification? Uh, uh, this program is sent to people who have written a question that the people who have written a the the 어 일단은 북한에서는 한국에서는 제가 한국에 와서 보니까 스무 살까지 고등학교 교육이더라고요. 근데 저는 열일곱 살에 군대 만 열일곱 살에 이제 군대 입대를 했고 어, 군사복무 기간은 11년제거든요. 11년제인데 솔직히 북한 군이라고 말하면은 열일곱 살에 솔직히 아무것도 모르는 나이에 총을 메고 진짜 북한에서는 못 먹어서 북한 남자 평균 기가 100 60이라고 진짜 요즘은 조금 큰 편이긴 한데 예전에는 진짜 160도 안 되는 사람이 있었는데 150, 뭐 160 이런 사람들이 군대 17살에 군대 나와서 진짜 AK만한 총을 매면 머리 끝부터 발끝까지 총이 닿아요. 총을 질질 끌면서 군사공부를 하는 그런 사람들이 있었는데 솔직히 그걸 11년을 그 젊은 청년들을 11년 동안 사실 깜빵 생활 시키는 걸로 저는 똑같다고 생각을 해요. Yeah. Um, so to open up, in Korea, uh, I've noticed that in South Korea, I've noticed that people or children or students are educated in a school system until they are um, 18 years old or 20 in Korean age. Uh, for me, and typical in North Korea, boys that are age of 17, they already enter or serve in the military. And the tip, um, normal range of serving is 11 years. So if you think about it, a lot of people, but also especially men, um, they are not fed well enough that a lot of them are very short in stature. So I would say it's about 160 centimeters. Um, sorry, I don't know that in US um, conversion, but that's, I would say, is the average. Um, I think these days they might be a little taller, but I would, I would say that there were kids who are shorter than 160 centimeters who are 17, that young, and already holding the AK rifles. Um, and they, uh, while they're moving because they're so short, the rifle would be touching their head to toe. Um, and I would say like, it's same as incarceration to be serving in military for that long at that age. 음, 네, 뭐, 그렇고, 이제, 그렇게 17살부터 거의 30살까지 군에서 진짜 갇혀서 생활하다가 또 뭐, 사회를 나가면 사회 나가서도 조직 생활을 안 하고 한국에서는 내가 백수 생활을 해도 뭐, 잡아가는 게 없잖아요. 북한에서 백수 생활을 한다? 직업이 없이 내가 아무, 내가 하고 싶은 일을, 하고 싶은 일도 아니고 내가 직업이 없으면은 일단 어디에 이제 뭐, 사회 기간에 내가 등록돼 있는 직원 그런 회사에 등록돼 있는 직원 명이 없으면은 북한 그 경찰이 그 사람 잡아가요. 왜 너는 국가를 위해서 일을 안 하냐고. 이런 식으로 북한에서는 모든 사람들을 조직으로 묶어서 어 
진짜 통제를 하는 약간 그런 시스템이라고 보시면 됩니다. So the system in North Korea, no one is allowed to not have a job. So in Korea or South Korea, I um, would be totally fine if I don't have a job and if I'm doing something that I just like. But in North Korea, if you don't, if you're not registered in a system in the uh, social organization or the government organization, mm -hmm. um, and you don't have any um, employer that you are or, um, associated with, then the police would totally um, investigate you and take you away for not having a job, asking why are you not serving for the country. And you can see that North Korea um, controls people in a systematic, um, organized way <웃음> like that, as an organization. 음, 네. 그래서 제가 2000, 그 이제 군사 복무할 때 당시에 있었던 일인데, 그게 2015년 8월, 아마 15일쯤인가 그때 한국이랑 이제 북한이 그 목함 지뢰 사건이라고 아마 그 전쟁이 일어날 뻔한 사건이 있었어요. 그때 이제 북한 군인들의 동향은 진짜 그냥 전쟁이 일어났으면 좋겠다. 그냥 너 죽고 나 죽고 그냥 진짜 승자를 겨누자라는 생각을 하고 있었던 군인들이 되게 많아요. 내가 이렇게 힘들게 군복무 할 바에는 진짜 전쟁이 쾅 나서 통일이 뭐 어느 쪽이 이기든 진짜 전쟁이 일어났으면 좋겠다라고 생각했던 제 동료들이 너무 많았던 것 같아요. 네, 이게 20대 북한 20대의 어, 네, 젊은이들의 생각인 것 같아요. And in 2015, near August 15th, where might be on it, um, there was an incident in Korea where the wooden mine was discovered um, from that was sent from North Korea, found in South Korea. And that incident was so big that um, it caused um, almost a war. Um, it caught that much of attention. And I, was, I had a lot of co cool, um, fellow soldiers who of my age who thought that, oh, you know what, I would rather have a war happen. Um, I don't want to be serving like this uh, in this situation. I would rather have any side of Korea w win um, and become united. So I would say this, is, this was a typical, um, yeah, typical opinion for guys in their 20s. Hey, uh, thank you so much uh, for that question, Osvaldo, through uh, the registration link. And uh, Daniel, uh, you will have the last question uh, to ask to our speaker. Uh, you may unmute yourself and ask your question. Thank you. Uh, I'm Daniel. I'm from New York. I'm a college student. I wanted to ask, uh, I think you mentioned that you, your family is a bit upper class, upper middle class. I wanted to ask if uh, you had any uh, unique opportunities that let you learn about the world uh, and capitalism, uh, or if they were, if those opportunities were, a, a lot of North Koreans can uh, learn about those things. And also, if there was any particular moment uh, that you made you question. Oh, sorry, make you question what? Oh, did, did it work? <laughs> oh, um, sorry. Uh, uh, I wanted to ask uh, if. Uh, his, if, uh, did it work? Oh, I'm so sorry. I think I didn't hear the part where you said what incident he had to question something. Oh, I wanted to ask uh, if uh, there was any particular uh, incident that made you question the system. Uh, that, made him, that? That, that made him question the system, the oh, North Korean system. system. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thank you. No worries. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. 를 통해서 어, 북한의 시스템, 북한이 어, 네 북한에 대한 시스템을 어, 질문하고 의학에 생각하셨는지 궁금합니다. 음 일단 뭐 상류층 이제 중상층이라고 해서 
어, 북한에서 특권을 누릴, 뭐, 한국에서는 그렇잖아요. 내가 경제 활동을 해서 버는 것만큼 내가 누릴 수 있는 것도 많잖아요. 경제 활동을 해서 내가 이만만한 수익이 났다 하면은 내가 뭐 집도 살수 있고, 차도 살수 있고, 어, 뭐, 빌딩도 살수 있고, 진짜 내가 뭐, 진짜 열심히 일한 것만큼 또 가지는 것도 많은데, 북한에서는 내가 뭐 중상충이라고 해서 국가에서 주는 것도 뭐 그렇게 많지는 않아요. 조금 뭐 이제 다른 사람들이랑 꼽수는 틀리지만, 어, 그렇다고 해서 뭐, 저희 아빠가 뭐 한국으로 말하는 원스타였는데, 저희 아빠 월급이 한국 돈으로 아마 천 원도 안될 거예요. 네, 한국 돈으로 이제 천 원도 안될 정도고, 아마 그 북한 돈으로 계산을 하면 아마 2만 5천 원인가 아마 받았던 것 같아요. 2만 5천 원이면 북한에서 쌀 다섯 킬로 살 돈이 저희 아빠 월급이셨거든요. 한국에서 솔직히 원스타게 되면 솔직히 뭐 진짜 뭐 몇백은 받을 것 같아요. 같은 생각이 드는데 뭐 얼마인지는 모르겠어요. 근데 뭐 저희 아빠 월급이 그 정도였고 어 제가 이제 군복무할 때는 어제 월급이 담배 한국에서 담배 한대 한가치 진짜 한가치 살 번도 아니었어요. 제 월급이 그 정도로 뭐 북한에서 뭐 시스템이 잘 돼서 어 진짜 주민들에게 그리고 이제 국가를 위해서 또뭐 김정은이나 그런 이제 그런 사람들을 위해서 종사하는 사람들에게 어, 크게, 뭐, 포상을 해주고, 뭐, 그 사람들한테 혜택이 차려지는 건 아니에요. 뭐, 물론, 진짜 그, 진짜 제일 위에 있는 상류층? 뭐, 김정은 최측근들한테는 그런 게 차려지겠지만, 그 밑에 사람들한테는 까지 그렇게 차려질 정도의, 어, 그런 건 없어요. 네. 그래서 뭐, 어, 제가 북한에서 저희 아빠가 뭐, 원스타라고 해서 북한의 혜택을 크게 받아서 내가 기억에 남는다는 게 진짜 없을 정도니까. 네. 그런 것 같아요. 뭐, 북한은 진짜 그, 그, 한국에서는 그래도 법이 조금은, 어, 뭐, 진짜 체계적으로, 음, 잡혀서, 어, 그래도 국민들이, 아, 이런 잘못은 하면 안 돼. 라는 의식이 되게 많은데, 북한에서는, 어, 진짜 내가 사람을 죽여도 우리 아빠 백이 있고, 우리 집에 돈이 있으면 그걸 돈으로 무마시킬 수 있는 아직도 약간 그런 법치 국가, 어, 약간 북한에서는 법보다 이제 주먹이 가깝다라는, 네, 방식이죠. 약간 그런 시스템인 것 같아요. 네, 감사합니다. Um, so he answers that even though I was so called upper middle class um, family or part of that family, there was uh, not so many uh, benefits or privileges that I've experienced. So my dad's or my father's um, rank in the military would be um, in Korea, like have one star in the army. So I searched up and it says uh, brigadier general. So it's like the very first general um, right above colonel. So even for him uh, at that rank, he would only receive about less than one US dollar. Um, in currency here or in Korea, which is insane, but that amount of money would um, be his um, uh, monthly income. And if you think about it with um, 2.5 US dollars or less than that would get us five bags, big bags of rice in North Korea. And for me, when I was serving, my monthly uh, wage would only be able to buy uh, a piece of cigarette in South Korea or even less than that. So um, that is the reality. There's not so much privilege that people receive unless you're like the very top um, classman, right? Um, the closest to the Kim Jong-un family. So if you think about it, other countries, um, for example, country, uh, For example, South Korea, the law is very organized, um, systematized and systematic. Um, and people, the citizens themselves have the sense of rule of law, right? Um, they know that if I do this, um, if I commit this crime, I'm going to be punished this way and I should not be committing crimes. But in North Korea, if you do, if uh, for people who are, um, think that they have enough um, political or 
yeah, political power in the family or their father is um, in power or something like that and have money, they do not care or, or believe that they can be committing murder and things like that. So that is the system in North Korea, I would say. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Daniel, for uh, that question. And uh, this concludes our Life Beyond Borders speaker event. So I wanna say thank you again to Oh Chung Sung for making the time to speak with us tonight. Uh, uh, and also, uh, yeah. thank you to the uh, UCLA Link team for co-organizing co this event, um, to our tech team for helping us run the event on Zoom. Uh, thank you to Onshim for helping out with translation. And most of all, thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, please be on the lookout for the post-event survey once you leave the Zoom meeting. I hope everyone stays healthy and I wish the best of luck to all the students throughout the remainder of the semester. Uh, good night, everyone.